kanalen. I dag ska vi ta upp något ett intressant tema. Så jag sätter över till studio. Uh, <coughs> I'm sure you all have read about Mr. Kowalski. He was the Norwegian uh, consul, the Polish consul in Norway. And he had, Norway has a lot of childcare cases where Polish children and other foreign children are being taken into care and placed in foster homes. And of course, being the representative of his, con his country, he has the right and the duty to protect the interests of his fellow citizens who are living in foreign countries. And here, the foreign country was Norway. Uh, Mr. Kowalski was, uh, he has intervened in about 200 cases uh, during the six years he was in Norway. But um, in February of this year, he was um, at a meeting in Hama in, outside Norway, outside Oslo, and um, the social workers did not like his presence there. So they called the police and he was asked to be, leave the uh, social offices and he was, uh, the police ordered him not to be seen within the town area for 24 hours. And after that, he was declared persona non grata and expelled from Norway. <laughs> and um, there's a film, we'll show the film after the ceremony. Uh, but this uh, a diploma with a gold frame, we usually give our, our laureates a gold frame uh, to show that we, we think that gold worth, uh, worth the weight in gold. Uh, it states here, Nordiska kommittén för mänskliga rättigheter utdelar en livstidsutmärkelse till Slavomir P. Kowalski för visad integritet, civil courage och för framstående insatser i dina konsulära uppdrag till skydd för polska barn och familjer som har kommit till söka ljuset av det norska barnvärnet. På förordnande och uppdrag av ditt hemland, Republiken Polen, bistod du dina landsmän, såväl barn som vuxna i Norge, vilket inte uppskattades av de norska myndigheterna eller Norges regering. Du förklarades personen om grata och utvisades från Norge. Men dina gärningar för polska barn och familjer i Norge framstår som exemplariska och borde anammas av andra utländska beskyckningar i de nordiska länderna. Du förtjänar din plats i Europas rättshistoria. Ditt fortsatta engagemang för offren för de sociala myndigheternas rättsövergrepp mot såväl barn som vuxna är oinvärligt och vi hoppas att detta hedersdiplom kommer att vara ett bestående minne av vår uppskattning. Mr. Kowalski. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you. Very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. We're not finished yet. <laughs> yes. And I will move over to the side. Yes. Yes, well, on, I'm here as uh, a representative of the Norwegian part uh, of uh, NKMR, as well as uh, a board member. And um, this little piece over here is a um, is a handcrafted uh, uh, little book. Uh, it's crafted from uh, one solid piece of rock by a Dutch uh, artist, and uh, it uh, sort of lies very well in this hand. And we hope it will lie very well in your hand as well. Uh, it symbolizes uh, the eternal. Um, the eternal uh, law of human rights hewn in stone and it's open so it's in use so we we on behalf of our uh, Norwegian sympathizers I uh, would uh, wish to give you this token as appreciation of your courage and determination in pursuit of simple decency thank you thank you I'm, I'm really honored. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, we don't we don't really work for 
awards and distinctions, but uh, actually when I get it, I think as every human person, uh, it uh, gives me, uh, it str strengthens me in the conviction that uh, uh, people are not indifferent to what I do and uh, gives, allows me in a way to, I would say, recharge the batteries. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, I had an interesting experience in Norway for six years. I've met many uh, great Norwegians and uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be here with you. And it's important to me in, in the context of the whole story that I went through. Uh, thank you again for that. Indeed, it's, it's a real honor and privilege. Thank you. Well, okay. do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, thank you for, for that great opportunity to address you. Uh, it's it's an honor and a privilege, and uh, I would say uh, since uh, I'm a Polish diplomat, I work in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, so I have to state that, that uh, I'm here in my private capacity. So all the reflections and views that I express are the views, my personal views are not the views of uh, my ministry or my government, uh, although I, um, of, I am of the conviction that they're not conflicting with the policies of my government. Um, what my private views are also a bit biased by the fact, but I think it's with all human beings, by the fact that of my faith, that I'm being um, uh, Roman Catholic, uh, and uh, it's, it's important and perhaps it uh, allows me to look at this from a certain perspective. Um, why I'm saying that because actually I want to refer to the quote that was given by Stephen Bennett at the beginning of his presentation. And I just wanted to say that actually in my Catholic formation I'm quite on the other side than what he was doing because I'm also a friar member in the Franciscan secular order and that is precisely not dividing people into those in power and those without power, but it's an order where humility and uh, poverty are virtues. So that's, that's my formation, so perhaps it helps me to look differently into people. As you know, St. Francis was also gifted with that idea that he used to go and voluntarily help to the lepers in the hospital, so I think it's the Franciscan duty to be with the people who suffer. Uh, although the suffering of today is different than it was in the Middle Ages, perhaps. Um, what I wanted to say is that we meet on this year's symposium is very particular, because this year we celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And that is a fundamental international document. Uh, which set the framework, framework for the application of human rights to child cases. Um, and uh, it's based, as all human rights, regardless of our religion and attitude, are based on the concept of natural law. And uh, of course it's related in a way, so when I'm saying that I'm influenced by my religious thinking, it's also related to uh, to, because all the human rights are related to the fact that we recognize the free will as a distinctive feature of humanity. Um, and uh, free will and respect to the other human who is also free and is also being created uh, and mirrors the creator. Uh, so um, in this aspect I think it uh, doesn't matter what, what beliefs we are if we all hold to this notion of uh, natural law, uh, we know that in natural law the relations between parents and children should be shaped and developed by love. Right? The, word, the English word perhaps doesn't give the, the real meaning because I think uh, <coughs> Latin is maybe better because it gives the proper word in Latin that would be caritas rather than amor which is of a different idea, caritas, is this kind of love 
that is precisely the parent's love for the child, which is a sort of a sacrificial law, love. So that in love for the child, a parent is able to give everything, including life, for the child. Uh, and that is what we would describe the natural relation. Um, and uh, I think uh, somehow, however, we notice that uh, there are ideologies that perceive the relation between the child and the parent as a conflict, as a conflict of interest. And therefore, these, in these ideologies, it is necessary to take sides in the conflict. Um, uh, well, that reminds me a little bit the perception of uh, the Marxist perception of class struggle. Because uh, I, I have to tell you, I was born under the communist times and I lived under the communist regime for, well, all my childhood. Uh, so I know what it means. <coughs> and uh, I think uh, this concept of struggle uh, puts us in actually in, in, the, in the danger that if we accept this kind of view, disproportion or measures might be used in order to um, have the advantage of one side or the other. And um, in my opinion, it's not a matter of choosing between the parent and the, and the child. It's always a matter of assisting the parent to care properly for the child. Because it's like the human body. If your toe gets wounded, you don't have to have your leg amputated immediately. So I think uh, proportionate measures have to be used. And why I'm saying this introduction is mostly because as I started with the convention, I think the key issue of the convention is the Article 3 which actually puts an obligation on the states to uh, use as the priority or treat as a priority the best interest of the child. And uh, here, best interest of the child is uh, something that, is, that has to be assessed uh, in particular cases. And uh, I think uh, one should not forget that there is a document, a general comment by the UN Committee on uh, Rights of the Child on how to assess um, this uh, best interest of the child. And I think the important thing is the reminder that it's not what an adult thinks is in the interest of the child. It is actually the assessment that should include all the rights of the child in the convention, not select the rights that the adult likes and discard the, the, the rights that the adult doesn't like. So uh, I believe uh, th that is important to uh, perform that assess this assessment uh, very carefully and uh, with that assessment of course disproportionate measure are not in the best interest of the child because they have to be proportionate to the problem so that we don't harm the child. Uh, Article 3 cannot be used as a key to breaking the law, to say that actually we don't respect certain laws because there is the best interest of the child the way we see it. So I think that's quite important. Uh, it also is connected with a very important article number 9. I'm not discussing all the articles or the convention, although all the articles are equally important, but I think nine is also very often referred to because it particularly deals with the separation of the child from the parent. And I would like to note the fact that this article starts with saying the states will not separate a child from the parents unless something. It does not say the states will separate the child unless something. So basically that is clear that the convention points out that the separation is a measure of last resort. If other measures are inefficient. So uh, it is important in the best interest of the child when we discuss about proportionate measures, uh, they, the using as a first step measure the measure of last resort might not really be in the best interest of the child. Um, in my work and also I think uh, being a consul it's, it's important because 
uh, you basically deliver the service to my nationals or the citizens of my country abroad. And that is a delicate and difficult issue of migrant children. And, uh, but not only, because uh, that extends to different situations. And there we often discuss Article 8, which is the right of the child to preserve the identity. The identity which is defined very widely, because it's not only name, nationality, citizenship, but also family relations. Family relations is a wide term that includes religion, tradition of the family. It is also associated with Article 20 of this uh, convention, which says that if the child has to be separated, a care has to, should be given to the fact that there is a continuity of a bringing environment in terms of ethnicity, culture, tradition and religion, so and language. So I think it is important why we discuss that, not only for the sake of keeping the identity which we believe is constitutive to the personal human development, but it, and I would later tell you why it is we have that experience that we know it's so important for human development, psychological development. But it's also because in view of the Article 9, as I said, when the states should not separate, once they do separate, they have an obligation to review the case in, to see whether the return of the child is possible. And the identity is also one of these elements that allows a child to be returned. Imagine um, a case, for example, I'm quoting it as an example. Uh, when you have a Muslim mother with the child, that is, whose name is Muhammad, let's say, that is being separated, the child is being separated from the mother, is placed in the Lutheran family, and he, his name is changed into Isaac. And then he's, how could be he returned to his family, Muslim family, as Isaac being Lutheran. That is actually hinder the possibility or makes the, poss the possibilities of return at least very difficult, not to say very, yes, uh, very hard. Again, I should not be doing the selection of the articles, but because of the time, I'm actually, I wanted to give certain signs I think we should also look at the Article 19 of that convention, which says that state has the obligation to prevent um, and protect the child from any, any kind of violence. And this is a wide article. It means also that the state has the duty to prevent the child from use of disproportionate measures by state uh, services. That is very important. So uh, I think uh, it is important to look at it, that it's an obligation to the state also to deal with the cases when the child is abused or uh, is under, uh, happen, you know, the cases of violence happen in foster families in particular. So uh, this article does not give any, uh, should not be seen as being against some kind of biological parent, it's just, it's general. So also applicable to foster families. Just to end up, I wanted to share with you my experience of last few months. It's uh, a few months ago, I was, I had the uh, honor to represent my minister uh, in one of the meetings, uh, events that was organized in south of Poland. It was a local bar association that made a movie documentary devoted to a Polish lawyer. Uh, that was a lawyer who, uh, just after the war, uh, was dealing with the cases of Polish children stolen by the Nazi system of Lebensborn. And uh, since he discovered the way of Germanizing names, Polish names, so he was able to uh, find and uh, discover and have them returned. 33,000 children. And uh, he also participated in the Nuremberg trials, the trials, not the main trial, but the side trials that were trying the officials of the Lebensborn system. And uh, 
It's interesting. The, what moved me during this event, I had the chance to speak to two persons who were taken as children. A lady that was taken at the age of four and a man who was taken at the age of uh, 10. Right now they're very old, so I think it's very important that we keep their memories. Uh, and it is, uh, it was interesting because of course the, the idea was not only the forced placement, but also adoption and change of identity. So they, there were certain measures to force them to forget Polish language, not to use the Polish language. So they were punished by using, when, when using Polish language. But then interesting story was from the lady because she ended up in a German family and the family was not even informed that she was Polish. They thought she was a German orphan. They changed her name, everything, all, in, all identity was changed. And uh, it happened when she was four. Uh, the authorities found her that she was Polish at the age of 10. And that's where, when she started suffering from this identity crisis. An identity crisis that uh, she feels until today, and she's 80, uh, about 80. And uh, basically, uh, that documents and points out uh, how important for the development of the child it is. And uh, it was interesting to the point that she, when she was adult, an adult, and she was given the choice to choose her, between her German identity and her Polish identity, he cho she chose the identity of her biological parents because she felt Polish. She returned to Poland, even though it was communist at the time. Uh, and even though she, had fond memories of her foster parent of these parents because they were not she was adopted of her adoptive parents uh, but uh, still it points out how important it is not to experiment with the identity of a child thank you very much okay um, we're going to show this film now uh, can we get the lights please respecting the rights under the Article 36 of the Vienna Convention Consular Relations. The rights have been denied to us. Polish citizens wanted us to, uh, to assist in their meeting, and we wanted to do it. We have the right to do it under the Convention. Norway is a party to the Convention. So I understand that you're coming here to enforce the law. All right. Right? Yes. Do you feel me? Yes. Okay. Why? Do you have anything against it? No. Just wondering? Yeah, just to be sure. <laughs> I have a diplomatic immunity and I request immediately that the law is respected. Yes, that's fine, but uh, uh, they called from here and said that you threatened uh, the no, employees here. Well, uh, they no, felt, they felt no. threatened. The, well, so that, that's why we're here. Sir, do you have any proof of that? Because this no, is a no, label. No, this no, is no, a label. Yeah, but we have to come here when they say they feel yes, threatened. Yes, but actually I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy that you're coming because I understand that you're going to tell them that I have the right to be here since the Polish citizens requested for it. Okay, okay. Yep. Including the child who actually came to, to say hello to me. And actually, I wanted to call in the police, and that's why they did it. Because I said, if you don't do it in five minutes, I will do it. All right. Because I need the law to be respected. Yeah, just one moment. <laughs> and if, if you, and also one more, one more request. 
If you're going to accuse me as a diplomat of some kind of crime, then please pr take the proof, okay? Because if there is a label on me, yeah, okay, madam. So far, no, but the lady did. But the lady did. Yes, we are talking to them. Okay, perfect. Okay, excellent. I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. Because this is all worthless. <laughs> Fine, I understand you. I, I don't mind it. No, don't worry.
plus grand, je pense que c'est mal. Okay, so then you have uh, a right to be here inside. We are inside here, right? Inside the building. Uh -huh. the building. And how about the Article 36 of the Vienna Convention? I don't know that. It's not good. You're not allowed to be in this building. That's the final. Yeah. You're not allowed. You can we go outside. Right yeah. Uh, okay, could you please call your boss? Yeah, we have. We just yeah. talked to him. So no, you I would like to, uh, to talk to him. No. You, you, you have to leave a Hamar Centrum. You're not allowed to be in Hamar Centrum. You have to leave the building, but you have to leave the... So, sir, but, but then we need to observe this meeting and we need to assist the Polish citizens. No, no, not now. No, actually, state it again, please, loudly. You're not allowed to do that today. You can leave the building if you want to do it, you have to do it by Sir, are you, are you claiming that I'm not allowed the rights under the convention, nope. Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, Article 36, yes? By our police law, we're allowed to make you leave police the building. Law? And how we are international yep. convention? we are. Yes, we are. Please take your things The police the uh, law, we are allowed to do that. You are allowed so to do it. So, you have Even to leave the, the building mm -hmm. and you have to leave downtown. Sir, are you downtown. intending to, to arrest me? No. Because I want to continue my consular mission. No, we're mission. not arresting you. Because I actually have to perform a consular yeah. function. No, and arrest you're is... you're denying it. No, arresting is a whole other law. That's not the police law. Police law is a whole other thing. Okay. We have the right to make you leave the building. So that's what we're doing. You have to listen to us. Okay, no. and how about the, you, have to, you have to guarantee me the right to perform my consular functions? Yeah, but you have to do that by phone then. You're not allowed to be in this building now. Sir, how can you imagine this by phone? So if I'm know. not allowed to do it here, then please break this meeting. No. And the meeting will have a place out of, after, in the place where actual... Okay, uh, we'll make it like this. Find me the place where I can assist him. No. You have to leave the building no, sir. now. Yeah, you're, so this is I a should. private property. Okay, the owners I understand. Don't want, the owners don't I want understand. Hurt. Yeah, if you understand, I will then leave it. Yeah. I will, but then you have to do su in such a way that I'm actually be I'll be able to perform my consular functions because right now you're hindering my consular functions this is and you do it con consciously. This is a parent. Uh, and the parents child wanted me. yes, and the parents yes. wanted me, and the child wanted me, and you saying that I have no yes. rights. But the and child, actually, the sir, please let me. Want you have. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because the law is actually, and also for my colleague from the embassy. Uh, I, I gave it. I yeah. gave it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. you, have, you well, have to leave the building, and sir. you have to leave uh, the home or downtown. You understand? Downtown. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you have to leave the building. You have to leave home or center, the center, city center. Yes. But why? <laughs> why? Why? Because, why do because you think we, we say so. That's why you have to how much I'm Sir, excuse me, would you, would you please stay because in the grounds for it? By the police law in Norway, when there's a disturbance, we have the ability to disturbance, make people... Sir. Yeah, you yeah, are a disturbance here. I am a disturbance <laughs> Yeah, you are a disturbance here. Thank you, You are? Sir. And by the What's police law... What's your name, law, by the way, actually? Okay. No, you can have my number. Yes, I will. Yeah. I will. You can't have my name, but you can have my number. Of course, I will. Actually, yeah. of course. Thank uh, <laughs> you. If we see you in, uh, excuse me, miss. 
Who is seeing you in uh, Hamar Centrum? Uh, you will be brought into the police station if you don't leave the city. So why? Why do you say that? Yes. How long? Twen 24 hours. So she was 24 hours? Okay. Yes. This Please yeah. do it again, yeah. madam. Yes. Yes. But yes. we, we yes. offered you a lot of times to go long. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. If you don't go by your own, we mm -hmm. will take you out. Madam, I think so you have a chance to leave now. Okay. Yes. But do you know that I have any real... Go out. Leave okay, now. okay, okay. Please yes. do, do it again then. Go. I'm trying to go, but you no, are actually... You're not going. But, no, but you're touching you're me. To you me. are touching me and yes. I'm, I'm not allowing you for that. Okay. And do you know that I, I have inviolability, personal inviolability? Turn, turn around and leave. And you actually broke the diplomatic convention. Okay. So what? But so then? Yeah. But could I take my stuff? Yes. We also need so that. yes, that's what I'm trying to do. But you're all you, the time you hindering to, me. Why did you say that? Well, I have. No. I have. I have. Yeah, but that, that is, it's yours. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Nie, nie ma co, musisz opuścić. Okay, so she has confirmed it. She has 24 hours to leave Hammer, right? No, she has to leave and can't come back in 24 hours. She has to leave now, right away. Okay. And you're not allowed to come back in 24 hours. Here. Okay. Yeah, downtown. Ah, okay. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Thank you very much for your hospitality. <laughs> 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 Mr. Kowalski, as a former chief of police <laughs> in uh, a town in uh, Norway, approximately the same size as Hamai, I can tell you that uh, these four policemen were in uh, complete violation of the code. Yeah. Uh, and even if you had not been a uh, a diplomatic representative, it would still have been in uh, violation of the law. And this is due to the fact that, um, yes, there is a police law allowing uh, the police to expel people from certain places if they uh, create a disturbance. But there is a, uh, I don't know how to say this in, uh, in English, it's a rettstridsreservation. Yeah. Um, there are all the, the, the fundamental uh, basic principle as is that if it's a disturbance it must be something you're not allowed to do so these guys here would if I if this had been my precinct they would have been fined okay so um, just so you know it <laughs> <laughs>